Let's look at a map. Among the first barbarian peoples who made contact with the Romans were the Gauls. And that was the Roman name for the great Celtic civilization. Extremely artistic, very warlike. Mark, you're going to be our Gaul. Now, the Romans were terrified of you, with good reason, because in 400 BC, you invaded Italy and sacked Rome. Now, the Gauls were known as swordsmen, using the long sword, like this one. Now, you need strength and flexibility to use that weapon, which is why most of them didn't have armour. So, you will go into battle wearing exactly what they did, tattoos and otherwise completely naked. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, all right, sometimes they wore pants and tunics of wool and fur and hide. And like all barbarian peoples, they used spears and shields and short-throwing spears called javelins. After many wars with the Gallic tribes, Julius Caesar conquered Gaul and crushed the final resistance in 52 BC. The Romans at last took revenge for the earlier sack of Rome in 400 BC. They slaughtered the Gallic people and destroyed their civilization. But it had taken them 350 years to do it. Elsewhere, other barbarians were giving them just as hard a time. Now, in 218 BC, the Romans invaded Hispania, Spain, where they fought for 200 years with the Celtiberians. Mario, that's you. Now, your guys were brilliant guerrilla fighters, and they had some remarkable weapons, including this one, the Falcata, which is based on the uh, ancient Greek coppice, probably brought to Spain by Greek merchants. Now, this was made of the finest quality steel, and the design put the weight of the blade down towards the end, increasing what's called the kinetic efficiency of the blow. In other words, get out of the way. Now, the Celtiberians had another sword, called a gladius. You might recognize this. It's a simple, short, stabbing sword. And they had a spear made entirely of iron called a soliferum. Now, these guys were great metal workers. It's possible that they even invented mail. So, Mario, you've got mail. Many Spanish and Celtic weapons were copied by the Romans. The short sword became the basis for the Roman gladius. The soliferum may have been the antecedent of the Roman javelin called the pilum. The Romans knew a good weapon when they saw one, and they needed them. In 115 BC, what we think was an early Germanic tribe called the Cimbri invaded Italy. They defeated five Roman armies, one after another. This led the Roman general Marius to completely reorganize the Roman army. The Cimbri were defeated in 102 BC, but the Germanic invasions had only just begun. The Germanic tribes also used the spear and shield, but they had a bunch of their own weapons as well, including this one, the sax, a short chopping and stabbing weapon. Here, shove that in your belt. They also used the axe. This is the largest type, the broad axe. Now, this could really carve into a Roman shield, but you need both hands to use it. The smallest version was this, the Francisca, or the throwing axe. But you just try throwing one of these. So that's what our team is going to do. Toss a variety of axes against these Roman shields. The throwing axe was useless against a shield. But it wasn't used like that. It was thrown high into the air in large numbers. It must have been very discouraging to get hit with one of these. I also want to show you this. It's a falx, a double-handed weapon popular with another group of barbarians called the Dacians. Chris, you're a Dacian? Now, the Dacians lived in an area of Europe that is now Romania. And from 81 AD, the Romans attacked them. You know, these Romans, they are not nice people to be neighbours with. So now we've got four basic types of barbarian. We have the Gaul, the Celt, the German and the Dacian. The remarkable warriors and all had excellent and different types of weapons. Now they need more practice with barbarian weapons before meeting a Roman legion in battle. This is the spear, the absolutely basic weapon of all ancient peoples. It's simply a pole with a pointed blade on the end. Now the spear could be used by individual warriors or by massed infantry. The infantry spearman would usually carry a shield in the left hand. He would carry his spear either in the high guard or the low guard. Would you uh, line up behind me and beside me? Now, combined with other spearmen, he could either defend himself or advance behind a wall of spears and shields. Spears! 
Now, this could be very effective, especially against cavalry and infantry. Ready? By the left, advance! But the individual spearmen had very little manoeuvrability, and the whole system requires a great deal of discipline, training and cohesion. Ready? Charge! Even then, the Romans found this to be no difficulty at all. They would just fix the spears with their shields and chop their way through them. So most barbarians fought as individuals. The individual warrior used a fighting spear of about seven to eight feet long. Any longer than that, and it would become unmanageable. Now, to use it effectively, you have to have both hands, so... No shield, which means you have to rely on the spear both for offence and defence. Now, you could use body armour and a helmet, but these are heavy and slow you down, so most barbarians didn't use them. That's better. Now, against other spears, you have to clear your opponent's blade before you can thrust in yourself. And there are lots of fancy parries and avoidances, all of which are completely useless if you can't counter-attack immediately. Right, let's try it against our Roman. Now, the spear is a stabbing weapon. The idea is to keep it moving, keep it thrusting in repeatedly, changing direction with both the blade and the body. This keeps your opponent guessing. He never knows what's going to hit him next. And it also prevents him from having a chance to cut down at your blade. Don't let him do that. Because your spear then becomes a stick and you look very stupid indeed. Now, the one great advantage you have with the Roman is distance. You keep stabbing in, trying to find his weak points. Go high, force him to lift up that heavy shield. Go for the legs and then high. Keep him guessing. Go for the shield side with a feint and then stab into the unprotected body. Feint, stab! Of course, if he's any good, and believe me, he is good, he's not gonna stand there while you do this. He's going to try and get inside and attack, because once he is inside this spear, you're a dead man. Shorter and lighter spears were less effective in close combat, but could be used as javelins. These were designed to be thrown into the enemy ranks before closing in with sword, axe or club. Our team is soon throwing javelins with some skill. That's good. But look what happens to javelins against this Roman shield and armour. Now that's not so good. Most of our javelins bounced off the shields and they certainly wouldn't penetrate armour. You'd be very lucky to hit an unprotected face or arm. What's more, the Romans advanced with much better spacing than this, so they presented less of a target for the javelins. Let's look at some other weapons. There's a couple of weapons we haven't talked about. One is cavalry and the other is this. The bow. Now, John, you know a little about this. Here are some bows. Show them what to do. The bow and arrow is a relatively lightweight and all-purpose weapon. Many barbarian tribes included bows as part of their arsenal. But in battle, they presented some of the same problems as the throwing axe. Shot straight on, many arrows would either miss their target or bounce away harmlessly. Instead, squads of barbarian archers would aim high in the air, creating a deadly rain and, in theory, terrifying the soldiers below. In close combat, barbarians used various types of cutting weapons. This is the Gallic longsword. It's a slashing weapon, very blade-heavy. You can use it either with two hands or with a single hand and a shield. And against a lightly armoured opponent, this would be deadly and it looks terrifying. But it will not penetrate a Roman shield. And if you get this stuck in that shield, even for a second, he'll be stabbing into your guts. Now, an alternative is this, the Dacian Falks, with a forward curving blade that went right over the shield into the helmet of the Roman. In fact, later Roman helmets had reinforcing crossbars to prevent this weapon killing the man who's wearing it. But, again, you've got to hit him with your first stroke, because if you don't, he will. Now, the axe. Everyone thinks this is a great weapon until you actually have to use it. It's true, it's very heavy, and if you actually get a good hard hit on the shield or on the armour, you'll cleave right through it. But he's not going to let you do that. The moment you start your swing, he's going to tuck under that shield, push in and stab. 
Of course, um, you can get a shield yourself. But if you do that, well, you have to have a much lighter axe in the other hand, which has much less penetration. And even then, for every stroke you give him, he can get two stabs in. Now, here is a weapon that really might work. The Falcata. Now, this had a really useful downward stroke and was so heavy and so sharp that it could pierce through shield, armor, and helmet. It also had a really useful point on it. And what's more, it was used with a left-hand buckler, small shield called a chytra. Now, this combination had a lot more power than the gladius, and it was much more maneuverable than that heavy shield. But I still don't like the odds.